Hi and welcome back to a new video. In the previous video, we were testing the RTX 5080 Noctua Edition versus the Astral, but I didn't have the time to also do overclocking, open the card, take a look at the cooler, and then also try to replace the fans. For example, with simple fans like the P12, but also maybe RGB fans. Yep, you heard correctly. RGB fans in a Noctua Edition. The Seasonic Prime PX2200 is currently one of the strongest PSUs available and it comes with two native PCIe 5.1 connectors which allow us to even hook up natively to RTX 5090. That is perfect for any overclocking system or high-end workstations. I'm also currently running this PSU and so far I'm really satisfied with its quality and performance. The cables are very flexible, there are also cable comps included and in addition also a 90 degree ATX 24 pin adapter which also functions as a PSU tester at the same time. The fan is semi-passive and even at a high load it is still very quiet. Find all information about this PSU in the link in the description. First we're looking at the stock condition with 3D Mark Speedway. And in this condition, the card should pull about 360 watts. So also what we can see on the wire view, as expected, like 350 to 360 watts. The card is in a full stock condition, which means Q profile, 89 FPS. We see about 2800 MHz on the GPU under load. Fans are spinning, as expected, slow, about 500 to 600 RPM. Board power draw about 360 watts and the GPU temperature is about 62 to 63 degrees Celsius. We're now increasing to 450 watts by just increasing power target to 125%. Also GPU voltage 100%, it's just a few millivolts, but it will allow the GPU to clock a little bit higher. But it will also depend on your application if you will be able to just directly draw the open or the allowed 450 watts. In this case, Speedway doesn't have enough load to just cause the card to pull 450 watts. So there is still headroom. But for example, if you would have used Furmark, and I think you can easily pull directly 450 watts. But you can also see that this adjustment is maybe not that great to do. We see an increase to only 90 FPS. And especially considering the higher power draw, this is killing efficiency. Board power went from 360 to 400 to 410 watts. So we see a 40 to 50 watts increase for one FPS. We see an increase from about 2800 megahertz to 2900 megahertz. But we have multiple things we can do now to increase the efficiency a little bit and that's mainly adjusting the memory clock. So I just maxed out the memory speed in GPU tweak. This also has an impact on the power consumption, but a relatively small one. And with the memory maxed out, this helped quite a bit more. With almost 95 FPS, just the memory as you can see maxed out right here. And now we will check what is possible on the GPU clock on this card. Interestingly, it seems to be the same thing on the GPU as on the memory, just maxed out whatever I could in GPU tweak, already passed three times. Seems kind of stable. And with everything maxed out, we can see 98 FPS, which is an increase of about 10% in performance with 3130 to 50 MHz on the GPU, 2150 on the memory. And the GPU just stays cold with about 65 to 66 degrees Celsius under load and especially keeping the fan speed of about 600 RPM in mind. That is a really good result. And with this, we have good baseline data and we can now proceed opening the card. I want to inspect the heatsink further and also how they attached the fans to it. We can clearly see that it's just three desktop fans of the NFA 12G2, but we also can see that the fan cable to it is just this one, which is quite normal for Asus graphics cards. And I'm just wondering if they added some adapter in between the three fans and this, or if there's like a, a completely different like native wiring to the fans or not. Similar as with other recent ASUS designs, if you remove all the screws on the back and then you should be able to remove the fan shroud, just also unplug the cable, then this should just work out. It's almost the standard fan, just with the exception of some rubber pads being added on the back of the fan. You can also see slight imprints, so making direct content, uh, contact with the heatsink, probably just to prevent vibrations and unwanted noises. And if I'm not wrong, I think I can spot a normal fan cable in between and it's probably just hidden underneath those small metal brackets underneath and there's probably just an adapter cable. So for our simple fan swap, we don't have to remove the heatsink. That's why I just put back the mounting frame. Also these two screws to just keep the stock condition for now. 
I will first try to remove these small metal brackets and to see if some kind of an adapter cable is hitting behind it. Awesome, I think that just looks like a normal 4-pin, which means we should be able to just take out all the fans and replace them. With this kind of concept, I'm just always interested in how effective is this like Noctua version, because those fans are obviously quite expensive. And in the end, it's just like a desktop swap. We're replacing normal GPU fans that are rather like slim and like smaller diameter with just normal desktop case fans, which are just stronger by default and thus have better performance, can spin at lower RPM. But the question is, is, is this like necessary in this degree or would a normal fan swap do the same kind of thing? That's why first cheap or like cheaper P12 and then later on RGB fans. As you can see, it's just a small adapter that goes to the three normal case fans. And with this, it will make it super easy to just put any kind of fans inside this shroud, just replace and see how it goes. Only thing I just noticed while I tried to pull these apart they added hot glue on all of the connectors, probably to make sure it's not coming loose. But I want it to come loose, so I have to check how I can pull this out. So first, the P12 swap. These fans usually have an additional connector on here, so you can daisy chain. I cut this off to save some space, because there's not that, that much space in here to squeeze too many connectors with the adapter at the same time. Didn't even take five minutes to swap the fans. Very easy to do. I just didn't add the metal brackets on the bottom back on because for what I want to test, that's just certainly not necessary. And I'm so curious to see how this will look like from the front. This looks quite nice. We still have the brown stuff on the fan bracket on here, but apart from that, I think this looks pretty cool. So we now have the Asus X Noctua X Arctic Edition. And due to the fact that they just used a fan adapter, I'm quite sure that this would, will work without any issues. It's just a question how the fan control will adapt in terms of fan speed versus temperature, but I don't see why this would be an issue. It also fits in perfectly with the ring that is on the side of the fan blade. You can't see the frame of the fan at all, so just looking at the fan blade itself. With this, you would also get a slight impression how it would look like if you would do a swap with black Noctua fans. And also the semi-passive operation, as you can see, is no problem and works without any issues. The card is now running full stock condition in terms of BIOS and overclocking and everything, so just Q mode and running 20 minutes of Fermark, so we have the same kind of comparison as in the previous video when it comes to temperature and noise levels. This is absolutely usable and quite close to the card with the Noctua fans in the P mode. We see a fan speed of 1150 RPM at 33%, resulting in a GPU temperature of 59 degrees Celsius, about 2650 megahertz on the GPU. The noise level measured from 30 centimeters distance again was about 39 to 39.5 decibels, which is about two decibels higher than the NFA 12. And these were running at 1070 RPM roughly in the P mode, resulting in exactly the same temperature. So these fans for exactly the same performance in terms of temperature, so 59 degrees Celsius under load, were just about two decibels louder because they were spinning about like 80 RPM higher than the NFA 12. But that is, that's absolutely perfectly usable. But now what about RGB fans? And I also chose some quite popular RGB fans. These are RS120 ARGB, also not that expensive. That means I have to remove the P12 fans again. And then we will install the RGB fans. The only disadvantage is that the card obviously doesn't have an RGB connector, which means that we will have to yeah, install probably RGB over the motherboard somehow. It's just a bit more effort with squeezing all the RGB cables and stuff in the bottom row, but not even 10 minutes and this is also good to use. Well, with RGB disabled or not plugged in, doesn't look too great. It looked much better with the black Arctic fans. I mean, obviously black goes with everything, but yeah, maybe that changes once we plug in the RGB. That's why I'm even more curious how it will look like once we power it on. That's definitely a color theme you have to like. That's, 
I'm not sure. <laughs> if the fan shroud wasn't brown, this might look cool. If it was like black and maybe some silverish small details to it, but with this, yeah. I think with this you, you get a ban from entering the Noctua building probably. If you're trying really hard, you can somehow make this almost look like a Noctua RGB version, but RGB and brown color is still the worst combination you could have. Like it's not really doable to have a nice brown looking color tone. But the result is also in this condition pretty good and usable. We see the same temperature again, 59 degrees Celsius, also roughly the same fan speed. It is between the Arctic P12 and the Noctua NFA12 fans with about 1100 RPM. It's just difficult to have a brown color with RGB LEDs because you need, with RGB LEDs you would want to have a nice shiny and bright color, which is what you can't do with a brown color tone. Brown is like a very dark orange kind of and yeah, it just doesn't work together. You would need LEDs to make something look nice, but then again, you would need something really dark to have a brownish color. I think this is the only thing you can do in this direction. It kind of looks okay, but that might also be the reason why Noctua just doesn't go with any RGB fans because they just can't make the own main color look nice. I don't think that's possible to have this like dark brown tone somehow with RGB LEDs, is probably the reason why they just don't want to do it. But if we look at the entire concept right here, it just shows that the fans are not really the reason why this card performs so well. It's mainly the heatsink that is reworked because even if we swap to those like cheaper RGB fans or the cheaper P12, we only see about two to three decibels difference while we have the same GPU temperature. And the reason why the card stays so cold has to be the reworked heatsink with just being so much more surface area, more volume, different heatsink design and also different heat pipe design, different heat pipe layout, more heat pipes. I think that's the main reason why this card specifically works so well. But you can swap it to any fans and it's still very pleasant, very nice to use, two to three decibels difference even with cheaper fans. And I hope uh, that Noctua will still talk to me after this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye bye.